So I have uh, a few announcements. And uh, there's not too many today. Uh, first of all, thank you for your donations to the food bank. Next week, the color is green that we're looking for. So um, we would appreciate any donations you can give. The Pastoral Care Committee is still looking for some people. You talk to Father Dan. Uh, peace candles at the back. There's a few lit. Uh, please, if you feel the urge, please light a candle for peace or a friend or someone who's ill. We would appreciate that. And there is a free will donation box there also. Baby bottle benefit. Thank you for the people that have brought their baby bottles back. Please bring them back ASAP. Father's Day is next weekend, so we would appreciate any that you, uh, you fill up. There are baby bottles. If you didn't grab one or you filled one up and you want to fill another, there are baby bottles at the back, so you can fill them up for South Niagara Life Ministry. Uh, meet and greet continues on Wednesdays from 10 to 1, um, and that is a socializing moment with tea and coffee and board games. Please make an effort to come on out for that. Um, and is there any other announcements right now? Well, with that being said, I'm going to ask you to do something a little different. So if you look at the back, there's a clock. And above that clock is a strange looking piece of equipment. And that is a camera that is focused on me right now. And what we'd like you to do is if you can turn and face that, or just turn your body, you don't have to stand up, but turn and face that, and we're gonna sing happy birthday because today is Kathy Koch's birthday, and I'm sure she's watching. So why don't we sing happy birthday to Kathy? And we're gonna do it a cappella. So, are we ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathy. Happy birthday to you. Woo! I'm sure her ears are bleeding right now. Um, so we have, uh, failing any other announcements, we acknowledge with respect the history, spiritual, spirituality and culture of the indigenous peoples with whom the Upper Canada Treaties were signed and the land where our church now stands. The Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and release to the captives.
Good morning. Good to see all of you. Singing happy birthday to Kathy reminded me that I'm supposed to let you all know that uh, their mom, Bev, sends her love from her new residence at Gilmore Lodge. Yes, so she's getting, yes, that's how I felt. She's getting the care that she needs. Um, Kathy and Patty can then, you know, take care of each other, and it's a load off of their minds because Bev is getting proper care, and it's just good and more good. So, um, and Bev wanted to be sure, and I, I give you um, her love. She's thinking of you, and uh, um, yeah, if anybody wants to visit Gilmore Lodge. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. joining in the collect appointed for today. Let us pray. O oh God, you have assured the human family of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarah and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to a place of Skechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent were Bethel on the east and Er on the east, Bethel on the west and Er on the east, 
And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward Neob. Discover what the Spirit is saying to the church. Today's psalm is Psalm 32, verses 1 through 12. We will read responsively by the half verse and the prayer together at the end. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. Oh, all right. How about we try Psalm 33? We'll do that one. We'll do 32 maybe later in the service or at coffee hour. Uh, Verses 1 through 12, responsibly by the half verse, and the prayer together at the end. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good to trust to sing praise. Praise the Lord with the harp. Sing for him a new song. For the word of the Lord is right. He loves righteousness and justice. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. He gathers up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin. Let all the earth fear the Lord. For he spoke and it came to pass. The Lord brings the will of the nations to naught. But the Lord's will stands fast forever. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let us pray. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. In your loving kindness, you watch over your chosen people. Make us witnesses to your truth and instruments of your peace, that all may know you as the God of justice and praise your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I think I'll get this one right. This is a reading from the book of Romans. For for the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to us, it was reckoned to him, were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him 
who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Discover what the Spirit is saying to the church. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But he heard this and said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him saying my daughter has just died but come and lay your hand on her and she will live and Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak for she said to herself if I only touch his cloak I will be made well Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Earlier this week, many of the clergy of the diocese gathered near Aurelia for the annual clergy and licensed lay workers conference. This was the second time since the pandemic that we've been able to gather in person. And it is that 
personal interaction that makes it most valuable for me. Sure, there was a speaker, and he was brilliant, thoughtful, provocative. But even when they've brought in speakers who were none of those things, the time has been well spent because we had the chance to reconnect with colleagues that we don't get to see very often. I had the chance to meet the six new deacons who were ordained last Sunday. I was telling one about being the rector in the town where I grew up. It is almost unheard of in the Anglican world. Something about prophets not being accepted in their hometown. I often speak of the blessing I've found it to be, the opportunity to stand with people I've known for years at the milestones of their lives. The happy times and the sad, it's hard to compare. One of the great advantages I enjoy is that I already understand the local culture, where many of my colleagues look at the southeast corner of the diocese and see Fort Erie, I know that there's nuance in the micro-communities, not just Ridgeway and Stevensville, but Crystal Beach, Bay Beach, Thunder Bay, Point Abano. Just being able to pronounce Point Abano correctly is one of the primary indicators that someone is local. I've been in conversations with folks that almost got heated over what marked the line between the South End and the North End in Fort Erie. Some say it's Gilmore Road, while others hold that it's the railroad tracks. My point is that having cultural understanding of the place and its people can cut through the need for a lot of explanation. There are a lot of things going on in our gospel this morning that the original readers would understand that we miss simply because of cultural differences. First, let's talk about tax collectors. Collecting tax was not a sin. Charging too much and putting the extra in your own pocket is a sin because that's theft. But Israelite kings took tributes from other kings that they had defeated in battle. Is that not a tax? Maybe we just call it the spoils of war and move on. Solomon had 12 officials scattered all over the kingdom And they were responsible for providing food for the king and his household for one month each year. The legend tells that Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's going to be quite a household to provide for. If those officials didn't gather those provisions by taxing people, I don't know how they were supposed to meet their obligation. In Jesus' time, The tax collectors aren't working for a Hebrew king. They're working for the Romans, the cruel, invading, pagan Romans. Even if the tax collector was honest and only charged what was due, they were still helping these pagans raid the cupboards of their own people. Technically, not a sin, but culturally, helping the oppressor at the expense of the oppressed. And along comes Jesus, who by this point has already done some things that have upset the officials. He told people to love their enemies. He healed a Roman's servant. He forgives sins, and he actually touched a leper. Now he calls a tax collector to come and join his merry band of followers. Then he crosses another cultural line. Let's talk about sitting down to eat together. Being able to feed someone else was a huge badge of honor. Families would eat together, but having limited access to limited resources made it very difficult to be able to provide for anyone else. Jesus goes and eats at Matthew's house. This brings a great deal of honor to Matthew, who, as a tax collector, would have no honor. It also sends the message that Jesus considers Matthew family. At this point, nothing has happened that actually goes against the law, 
that all these faithful Jews lived by. Let's talk about breaking the law. A man comes in, not just any man, but one of the leaders of the synagogue. So this is a good, faithful man. He's grief-stricken because his daughter has just died. He asks Jesus to come and touch his dead daughter so that she will live. He's showing a lot of faith in Jesus. So much that he wants Jesus to come to his house and break the law. Numbers 19.11 makes it pretty clear that anyone who touches the dead body of anyone is unclean for seven days, so long as they cleanse themselves on day three and again on day seven. Otherwise, they remain unclean and are cut off from Israel. Come and touch the girl, Jesus. The crazy thing is, he doesn't hesitate one heartbeat. He's up and ready to go. Now, the guy from the synagogue and Jesus aren't the only lawbreakers this morning. While he's on his way, a woman who's been bleeding for 12 years makes her way through the crowd to touch the fringe of his cloak. If she's bleeding, she's unclean. Leviticus 15 covers this. She has to stay away from people for seven days after it stops. She's unclean and elbows her way to Jesus just to touch his cloak. She's made everyone she's touched unclean. Only for the rest of the day, as long as they go and wash, but still. And because she's touched his garment, she's gone and made Jesus unclean. And yet he acknowledges her faith, and the bleeding stops. There's not mention of Jesus going through any ritual cleansing before he takes the girl's hand, and she gets up. The law says that this man is unclean. People are restored to health and wholeness by a man that the law says is supposed to stay away from people. It feels to me that something isn't quite connecting here. Abraham was a man who was closely connected to God. This was before there was a law. Then people started to turn more and more away from God, and so there came to be the need for law to help bring people closer to God and better align their desires with God's desires. Then I think people started to become more focused on following the laws and watching each other to catch them breaking the laws than coming closer to God and lining up with God's desires. So Christ came to help folks get back on track, pay more attention to God and their relationship than who's clean and who's not, who's in and who's out. Can the faith of a people be legislated? Can it be measured to determine who isn't faithful enough so that the required number of hoops can be set up for them to jump through? And who sets those standards? Is there anything that disqualifies any of us from receiving God's grace? I think it is freely offered, even to those who would tell us to our face that they don't want it. But for those who do, let no statute get in the way. Don't let anyone think that there's a rule or tradition or precept blocking your access. If you have a desire that faith in God through Jesus Christ be part of your life, I have good news for you. It's there. It may be small. It may just be getting started. It might be that your faith grew along with you, and while you continue to advance through your life, your faith remained a nice, comfortable, manageable size. doesn't have to. 
being part of a community of faith can help it expand, help it reach into those corners of your life you thought were partitioned off. There's more going on here than we realize, much more. I have to tell you, I'm no more comfortable letting people think that faith is just turning up on Sunday morning than I am letting them think that our community is just a patch of land where the end of the road meets the mouth of the river. In that way, our faith is like our town. Spend a little time exploring and you'll find all kinds of marvelous things. And I have to say that I don't think anyone is best served by either if they stay the way they are or stay the way they were. Here's wishing you every blessing on your own journey in faith. God love you. Amen. Please stand for the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People. I enjoy researching prayer sites for the Prayers of the People. The concerns and wishes we have here are universal. Our prayers today were taken from the website for the Church of England in Spain, and their concerns are ours as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to guide your church, especially when differences among us seem to threaten our very existence. Help us to work together and face the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we are part of the tension and injustice of the world. Heal the resentment between people and intervene in the world's conflicts. Help us to walk humbly with you at our side. And when we come to the crossroads and have to choose which way to go, lead us down the path of justice and righteousness while steering us away from the road that leads to selfishness and sin. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, help us to be gentle with one another and with ourselves. Give us, we pray, the calm that makes for consideration and the respect for others that makes us courteous. Take from us hard words and the cynical look. Let us be to others as we would wish them to be to us. And when we fail, forgive us. And when they fail, heal us. Lord, in your mercy. Caring God, we pray for all those who are afflicted by physical, emotional, or mental illness. Help them to keep their eyes fixed on you 
and give them the courage to face the trials and temptations that may come along. Help all those on our prayer list, and to this list we add Richard, who had surgery on Friday, and Kayla and Lorraine, who are having surgeries this week. Lord, in your mercy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving today for the caregivers who have helped those who are ill. And today, we thank you, Lord, for Kathy and Bev's caregivers, Kyle, Mary, and Nancy. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love and with those whom we have loved and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have recently died and those bereaved by their passing. We pray for the immortal souls of Elsie Holland Westhouse and Roseanne Brown and for their families and friends as they mourn their passing. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for the parish family of People's Memorial United Church here in Ridgeway as they deal with the trauma of closing their church. Help them to remember the many ways in which God has blessed their ministry and their lives in their parish home and in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And as we move into the coming week, Help us to remember our Savior's words as he sent his disciples out into the world. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of yourself, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share that peace. 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 Peace.
joining in the prayer over the gifts. Let us pray. Merciful God and Father, in Adam's fall, we were born to death. In the new Adam, we are reborn to life. In all we offer you this day, may we share a taste of your eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Gary just reminded me that I overlooked the shawl that is to go out. We don't want to do that. Let's take care of the necessary business. Um, before, where's my thing? It's not here. All right. Um, before we come to the table, we take care of business. This shawl is going out um, to Kaylee. And it'll be here as you come up for communion to add your own prayers and blessings. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for Shirley, who has made this shawl. We pray for Kaylee, who will receive it. We pray that she may receive this shawl in the, the friendship and the blessing for which it is offered. Send your Holy Spirit to be with her, that it may be a reminder of the love and care you hold for all your children. And at times when we need you most, you leave us not destitute. All of this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, oh holy Lord. Holy Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
joining in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. O God, we have shared in the mysteries of the body and blood of Christ. Nourish us by this feast that we may live the risen life and serve you faithfully in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, there are a couple of folks who are watching. Ken and Bev and Cheryl, thank you very much. And Kathy just happens to be watching, and she sends her love and thanks for the happy birthday song. So, um, well done, and thank you to everyone who um, expands our walls or expands our community beyond the walls. And, and, and through the week, if you have time to spend with us, God bless you for it, and, uh, and I hope that this feeds your soul. Um, and thank you for your, your presence. Um, and just before our blessing, <laughs> a couple of hiccups today, which reminded me that every time we have a, a wedding, I tell the couple, don't pray for a perfect day. Because if, you, if it goes perfectly according to plan, you have no stories to tell. Which then reminds me of Elliot Wiesel, author Holocaust survivor who wrote, um, God made us because God loves stories. So. <laughs> you know what? I hope everybody can gather for uh, coffee hour where you might enjoy Psalm 32. <laughs> Hold fast to your faith that it may move you to act with integrity and promote justice to choose kindness and dare to love and the blessing of God Almighty, Holy Creator, Christ, and Spirit be with you and work through you among those whom you love, today and always. Amen.
We are Christ's disciples, living God's word, doing God's work among all people. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.